Hi everyone, this is the third video in my series of videos on how to handle JSON in Oracle 12c. So in this example, I'm going to show you how to use JSON path expressions in Oracle. But before I talk about the path expressions, first let me explain what I've set up already. So I've created a table, JSON path example, that has two columns, ID and data. And the data column is going to be our JSON column. Then I insert it into that table, this JSON object here. And I think it's complicated enough for us to see how the path expressions work. So in yesterday's video, I showed you how to use dot notation when querying in JSON objects. Dot notation can only get you so far, though. It's for like the simplest cases. For anything beyond that, you'll need the JSON path expressions in Oracle 12c. So down here I have this select JSON query from JSON path example. So we're going to select from this uh, big JSON object that we have right here. Data, the first argument in this function JSON query is going to be the JSON object itself. It can be a column with JSON data in it. It can be um, a variable that has JSON in it. Or you can just be um, a literal JSON that you hard code right there. It doesn't matter as long as that first argument is JSON. And then the second argument will be the path expression. And it could have a special uh, modifier at the end of it that I'll talk about in a few minutes. So the first thing you need to know is every JSON path expression starts with a dollar sign. So if I run this query, I get the entire JSON object back because I just put in a dollar sign. The dollar sign means the context of whatever you're doing. And all the examples I'm going to show you today, the context will just be uh, the JSON object itself. But when I discuss JSON tables, the context will change. So you can start with um, one JSON object, and then the context inside of the JSON object will change depending on where you are in that JSON object. But for this video, only one context, the JSON object itself. So in the path expression, you can have two options. You can be looking at an, an object, so a property, or you can be looking at an array. So to access a property or a key, you use dot and then whatever the name of it is. So dot name should return the name. So let's run it and see what happens. Well, I get a null. Well, why is that? Well, the reason why it returns null is because JSON query always returns valid JSON. It will not return anything that isn't valid JSON. So dollar sign dot name is we expect that to be wildcats, but wildcats by itself isn't valid JSON. It's just a string. So to handle this, we can put this modifier after the expression and say with wrapper. So what this will do is wrap the result in an array to make it valid JSON. So when I run it, I get wildcats inside of an array. And this is now valid JSON. I mean, a single array is not very interesting, but it is valid. Uh, and Sometimes you won't know if you need to wrap the result in an array or not. So you can use with conditional wrapper, which means, I didn't spell that right, which means that if it needs to be wrapped, it will be wrapped. And if it doesn't need to be wrapped, then uh, the query won't do anything. It just return it as is. So if you're returning valid JSON already, you don't need to wrap it. If you are trying to get a a literal value like Wildcats or Joe Armin, then you need to wrap it. And if you don't want to bother with specifying it for each thing that you're querying, just use with conditional wrapper. So conditional wrapper. So I'll leave that on for all the examples. You just have to know that if it's valid JSON already, it will return a JSON object. If it isn't, then it will wrap it inside of an array. So name, um, let's try coach, get Joe Armin. So now let's look at one of these. Let's look at players. So players isn't uh, just a value. It's an array. 
So if I do players, let's see what returns. Now I get the entire array. And players with no um, array brackets is equivalent to this. So it's like I have the array brackets and I have a star in it, meaning return everything in that array. So I get exactly the same thing back when I run it. So anytime you're dealing with an array, you can always use these brackets here. And no brackets and nothing in it is equivalent to just nothing there. So for arrays, I'll use the brackets just to make it clear. Um, inside of the brackets, you can specify an index. So you can index by, let's say, we want the element in the one position. And I get Anthony because 0, 1, so this right here. And then 2 is Rodney. So if I change this to 2. I can also do multiple, so I can do 0 and I can do 2. And I get Eric and Rodney. And I can also do a range. I can do, let's say, 1 to 2. It's not a very interesting one because there are only three elements in the array, but it gives me both Anthony and Rodney. And you can also specify more than one, so zero, and then you can do one to two. And you get the whole thing because there are only three elements in the array. And you can do this for any combination that you want. Just make sure that um, the numbers are ascending as you go from left to right. So zero, one to two, then say if there were more, you can do four to five, and then eight. 10 to 20, whatever you want to do, just make sure they're ascending. So I'll put this back to star to get everything. And let's say I want to get all the names. So if I type players.name, then I will get an array with all the names. Eric, Anthony, Rodney. And if this with conditional wrapper were not there, then I will get null. I'd have to say with wrapper um, because Eric, Anthony, Rodney by themselves is not a valid JSON, but when you wrap it in an array, it becomes valid JSON. So we can do the same thing for position. And number as well. And then if I wanted to specify something specific like 2 in the array, at second index, you get 22 because this is the second element and the number is 22. Okay, so now let's move into this one. This is a much more complicated um, object, so I will change this. Well, let me just delete this here. So I'll start with games, and it's an array, so I'll use the array syntax and the path. And now I have all of this. So let's look a little deeper inside of it. Let's say we wanted to get all of our opponents. So that is a key in the two objects here. So dot opponent. And I get bulldogs and falcons. And then if I want the location. I get home and away. So now let's look into this next array here. So we have um, player points, which tells you how many points were scored by each one of the players. So if I do dot player points, it's an array. So I need the stars or the bracket and the star. And now I get a syntax error because this dash here is not valid in the path. So to fix that, because it's actually in the JSON object, you have to put quotes around it. Now with quotes, it should work. Okay. So just know uh, it's basically alphanumeric. So it has to be a letter or it has to be a number here. Anything else, any special characters, you're going to have to wrap it in quotes. 
So you see here when I have player points, I get all of the objects that contain player points. And there are two games, so it contains all the player points from uh, both games, which is um, six objects. And then let's say I wanted only the names, which doesn't tell me much. So let's say points instead, I get this. So the number of points scored by each player, each game, um, I can put an index there and get a more specific result. Let's see what else can I do. Let's go back to star and show the name. It will just repeat the names. Okay, so that's how you use path. Is you can see it's fairly simple. Um, the dot notation is somewhat similar to accessing objects in JavaScript, but at, um, we have added these uh, array brackets to make looking at the data a little bit easier with the path. So with the path foundation, in the next video, I'm going to cover how to convert JSON data into relational data. So, so far, we've only been returning one row, but if we want to convert the data in the JSON object to more than one row, say like um, we have this player points array. What if we wanted two columns returned for each one of these objects? So we have a name column and a points column, and then we want it Eric returned in the name column and points returned in the points column. And we do that for each one of these objects in there. So we have three rows returned. How can we do that? Well, in the next video, I'll discuss that. Um, and we're going to use JSON path expressions again. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.